Bernardus Andrews, Dries, Riphagen, the 7th of September 1909, the 13th of May 1973, was a Dutch gangster and Nazi collaborator who is best known in the Netherlands for collaborating with the Nazi Sicherheidsdienst, SD, to locate as many Dutch Jews as possible and have them delivered to Nazi concentration camps during the occupation. Riphagen would gain the trust of Jews by promising to safeguard their belongings primarily jewelry, until the conclusion of the war, only to defraud them of their belongings and notify the SD of their location. After the end of war in Europe, he faked his death and went into hiding. He deposited the stolen Jewish belongings and money in an undetermined bank in neutral Switzerland and fled to Argentina, as had many Nazi officers. He secretly returned to Europe at some point between 1950 and 1970 to withdraw the ill-gotten jewelry. Dutch authorities issued an arrest warrant and bounty on Rip Hagen in 1988 but it later transpired that he had died at a Swiss private clinic in Montreux in 1973. Biography Early life Rip Hagen was born as the eighth child into a Dutch family in Amsterdam. Rip Hagen's father worked for the Royal Dutch Navy, while his mother, a homemaker, died when he was six years old. His father married a second time but did not take care of the children because he was an alcoholic. At the age of 14 Dries Rip Hagen was sent to the notorious Merchant Navy Training Center, Pollux, and from 1923 to 1924 went to sea as an ordinary seaman. He stayed in the United States for two years working for Standard Oil, during which time he came into contact with local criminal circles and learned their methods. His subsequent nickname Al Capone came from this time in the United States. After his return from the United States, Rip Hagen joined the National Socialist Dutch Workers' Party, NSNAP, an extremely anti-Semitic minor party whose aim was that the Netherlands should become a province of the German Reich. He became one of the foremost figures of the Amsterdam underworld, known among the pimps on the Rembrandt line, and developed a taste for jewelry, precious stones and gambling, also dealing in used, sometimes stolen, cars. Second World War During the war, Rip Hagen continued his criminal activities and expanded into profitable cooperation with the German occupiers as a trustworthy ally of the German Security Service, the SD, and later as a member of the Central Office for Jewish Emigration in Amsterdam. It was his task, together with his colleagues from the Amsterdam underworld, to uncover the black market as well as to track down Jewish property, which was being sold outside the German foreign exchange regulations. As a bonus, the men received 5 to 10 percent of the confiscated goods and they slipped many valuables into their own pockets. Dries Rip Hagen soon took part in the hunt for Jews, Jude and Jag, together with members of the Olich family, who were feared Jodenklopper, Jew beaters. From 1943 he was part of the Hanike Column, a group of investigators who searched out Jews who had gone underground. This approximately 50-strong group was founded in 1942 by Wim Hanag, the stateless son of a German immigrant. From March 4 to March 31, 1943, the column, which consisted mainly of professional criminals, handed over 3,190 Jews to the German authorities, who deported them to concentration camps in Eastern Europe. A reward of between 7.50 and 40 guilders per person was paid. The column also coerced Jewish people with the threat of deportation to betray other Jews who had gone into hiding. By the end of 1943, Rip Hagen had collected a small fortune, which he deposited in various accounts in Belgium and Switzerland. Finally, the Hanite column was dissolved on the grounds of corruption. Rip Hagen was employed in the last year of the war by the Hoffman Group of the SD in Essen, which specialized in the detection of shot down Allied airmen and weapons that had been dropped to the resistance. Rip Hagen played an important role in 1944 in partially rolling up the underground resistance organization Identity Card Center, Perjun in Central, in the course of which the Jewish German resistance fighter Gerhard Badrian was shot. 
After the war after the war dries Rip Hagen was wanted by the police for the betrayal of Jews as well as treason and the public prosecutor considered him responsible for the death of at least 200 people. Rip Hagen contacted the former resistance fighter and head of police in Encheed, Willem Everett Sanders, who wanted to do a deal with him. Rip Hagen was not handed over to the authorities but was placed under house arrest as a private prisoner in exchange of information on collaborators and German-friendly networks. In February 1946 he escaped. According to rumors, he was helped across the border by his underworld friends in a casket inside a hearse but according to more recent findings, the escape was organized by two staff members of the Dutch Secret Service Bureau voor Nationale Veiligheid. Fritz and Pete Kirkhoven. From Belgium he spent three months traveling to Spain by bicycle. According to his son Rob. In May 1946, Rip Hagen was held in Huesca, Spain because he lacked the necessary personal papers. He was imprisoned but on the intervention of a Jesuit priest he was released on bail, under the order to get his papers rectified. He obtained an Ansan passport and Fritz Kirkhoven provided him with clothes and shoes in which diamonds that he had deposited with Kirkhoven were hidden. When he was about to be extradited to the Netherlands, he was now living in Madrid. He flew to Argentina on the 21st of March 1948 with a friend. His contact address there was also that of a Jesuit priest but nothing is known of any connection with the Ratlins. The Dutch ambassador in Buenos Aires, Floris Carcilius and Baron van Palant made a request for extradition, based on lesser offenses such as vehicle theft and robbery in which, according to the Argentine judiciary, were already time barred and for which the submitted evidence was inadequate. The fact that Rip Hagen was not handed over to the Netherlands was most likely due to his good connections. He was friends with a member of the Supreme Court of Argentina. Rodolfo Valenzuela, who also served as secretary to President Juan Perón. He became acquainted with the presidential couple and remained in contact with Perón until his death. He settled in Belgrano, a district of Buenos Aires, where he ran a photography press office and worked for Perón's secret service as an instructor in anti-communist tactics, imparting whatever knowledge he acquired working for Germany during the war. He also organized boxing competitions at the Luna Park for Jan Olage, his old friend from Amsterdam. After the Revolución Libertadora, where Perrin was overthrown, Rip Hagen returned to Europe and traveled around, mainly in Spain, Germany and Switzerland. He preferred to surround himself with wealthy women, who also maintained him. His last known address was in Madrid. In 1973, Dries Rip Hagen, the worst war criminal in Amsterdam, died of cancer in Montreux. Historical reappraisal in the Netherlands in 2010 Two Dutch journalists and employees of the newspaper Het Parool, Bart Middelberg and René Ter Stieg published the book, Rip Hagen, Al Capone, in van Nederlands Grootstorlijks Misdijgers, Rip Hagen, Al Capone, one of the Netherlands' greatest war criminals. The book is based on interviews with Dries Rip Hagen's son, Rob, and Bet Yewery, who had collaborated with the Germans. In 2016, the film Rip Hagen by director Peter Kajbers was produced in the Netherlands, the main character being portrayed by actor Jerome van Koningsbrugge. The screenplay was written by Thomas van der Rie and Paul Janelis, based on the book by Middelburg and Ter Stieg. In 2017, Dutch TV station VPRO broadcast the film as a three-part series. References